please put your hands together and welcome to stage the fantastic Sean Collins. Hello. <laughs> Don't worry, I, uh, I'm from Canada originally, but I've lived in the UK for eight years. I know that's pretty much the standard response to hello. <laughs> Just stare at me till I cry. <laughs> I mean, I've learned a lot since I moved here. When I first came here, I used to smile. <laughs> I love your country, though, and quite frankly, it's because things don't work here and you guys don't seem to care. <laughs> and that is the best attitude to have, because you know there's no point in complaining about anything, because your government's not going to do fuck all to change anything anyway. <laughs> One of my favorite things to do on Sunday is go down to a train station, watch foreigners who have just arrived in the country with a train ticket being ushered onto a bus. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, 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 it's remarkable fun to watch because they have no idea what's going on. And you can see them look at the train ticket for a minute, and then they look behind them to make sure they're at a train station. And then they look at the staff member and say, but I have a train ticket. Get on the bus. <laughs> it's even funnier when they get angry. This is an outrage. How dare you put me on a bus? I have a train ticket. I want to speak to your manager. You just missed your bus. <laughs> this is how English I've become with the trains after eight years living here. I was in Germany the last time the snow shut down England. Sorry, as a Canadian, that made me laugh. I had friends calling me from Canada going, how much snow did they get? An inch. And the whole country shut down? The whole fucking country shut down. You had people working out of their own home calling in sick. So again, this is how English I've become. I had to get my itinerary off the German lady behind the counter and I walked up to her and I noticed there was 10 minutes in between my connection. And I said to her, look, there's only 10 minutes in between my connection. What if the first train is late? And she went, why would it be late? <laughs> You're absolutely right, I live in England. Sorry, I don't know what I was thinking. And then it got really weird. She went, do you know something about the train? <laughs> no, 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 no. Called security over and said, this gentleman said the train's going to be late. And I was like... <laughs> I, uh, I love playing this club. Uh, every time I come here, I'm reminded of what comedy would be like if it was illegal. <laughs> like if Nazi Germany had won the war, this is how we'd have to watch comedy, you know? It's in a dark basement, hidden from everyone. <laughs> I've also never been in a club less concerned about a fire code in my entire fucking life. <laughs> Let's face it, I mean, if this place goes up, we're all gonna die. <laughs> I mean, you'll get out, you know, but I'm not even gonna try. I'm just gonna do some of my best you're on fire material as you're running the world. The reason I stayed here is uh, I met my wife here and fell in love and, and we had a child and, 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 uh, and that's the story behind it. And uh, I'm old as well and I have a child that is, uh, I'm really tired um, <laughs> all the time now. And uh, for those of you who don't have children, I'll tell you why. It's because they never go away. <laughs> Ever. Like I'll be reading the paper on Sunday going, he's looking at me right now and I look down and well, there he is. Fuck off. <laughs> Just for a minute, please, fuck off. <laughs> he jumps into bed with us every night at three in the morning. If you don't have a child, children have the ability to sleep, spin, and kick at the same time. <laughs> it's quite remarkable because they get a good night's sleep and you wake up wrecked and it goes on and on, day after day. <laughs> And I know I'm tired because I said this to my wife the other day. I said, look, nobody has any memories before they were five, so why don't we just duct tape them to the wall? <laughs> he didn't walk till he was two. He never crawled. He just dragged himself along the ground by his arse. 
we didn't know what was going on, so we went to the doctors and we said, look, he's not walking, he's not crawling, he just dragged himself along the ground by his arse. And I didn't know there was a name for it, but the doctor looked at me and my wife and said, that's because your boy's a bum shuffler. <laughs> and I looked at my wife and I looked back at the doctor and I said, I think it's a little early to determine that. <laughs> Horrible bringing them to preschool. Well, preschool, it's just six women that made a bad career choice. <laughs> yeah. But we'd bring them in, all the other kids are running and crawling, and just plunk them in the center of the room, and he'd just sit there, and I was like, have fun. Walk! And parents, you want your child to meet their milestones with other, with other children, so you're competitive a little bit. And the parents would always greet me and my wife at the door with, is he walking yet? And I'd go, no. And they'd go, aww. I'm sure he'll get it. And I was like, well, fuck, of course he'll get it. I'm not going to turn up at college and plunk him in the center of the fucking room. <laughs> there you go, son. Study hard and bum shuffle to the library if you need any books. started lying to other parents. They were like, is he walking yet? I was like, fuck, he drove us here. <laughs> well, your toddler's not driving yet? <laughs> you never think you're going to be as embarrassed as you are until you go watch your child perform something at school. <laughs> Look at all the parents here going, no, it's cute. No, it's horrifying. And you know it's horrifying. <laughs> because it's a reflection on you as a parent, right? And we were in the back of the room. They had career day at my son's preschool. They asked three-year-old children what they wanted to be when they grew up. And me and my wife were in the back going, please don't say anything dumb, son. Please don't say anything dumb, right? They went to the first little girl, and they said, what do you want to be when you grow up? She said, a ballerina. And everyone went, aww. And even I went, aww, because that's nice. Then they went to the next little boy and they said, what do you want to be when you grow up? He said, a fireman, because I want to save people's lives. I was like, you were coached. No way you came up with that on your own. Your shoes are on the wrong feet and you just shit yourself. Fuck off, all right? And then they went to my son. And they said, Joel, what do you want to be when you grow up? He said, black. And everyone knows I'm a comedian, so they all turned and looked at me, and I was like, I didn't tell him to say that. <laughs> but I'm not going to destroy his dream if he wants to be black. I mean, not with that cock, but give it a try. I guess I don't know. <laughs> they get you sick, too. Anybody here planning on having children? Expect to get sick all the time because they go hang out with other mutant children and <laughs> bring home these diseases that they can fight off in six hours and it takes your old ass immune system six weeks and four bouts of fucking antibiotics to get rid of. He vomited on me recently and I mean not normal vomit. He covered me in head to toe with vomit. And then he laughed. <laughs> and I looked at my wife covered in vomit and I went, I wonder if I'm going to get sick. And she went, oh yeah. <laughs> I woke up the next morning, oh my God, I had to, to vomit and poo at the same time, which is a horrible decision to make first thing in the morning. What do I want to clean up? Got back to bed and lied there, freezing, got under the covers, boiling, you know that feeling? You just fight for that little foot out where you go, oh. Then you move it too far, freezing, freezing! <laughs> it dawned on me, I thought I was going to die, that I hadn't written my will. So I wrote my will out deliriously. My wife showed it to me when I came to. It said, if I die, I leave everything to my beautiful wife, Claire. If she is already dead, kill the boy. <laughs> he's duct taped to the wall downstairs, and he's, uh, he's the host of this disease. Don't let him live. I'd like to thank Toy Story for making my son believe that all his toys come to life after he goes to bed. Now I can't fucking throw anything out. <laughs> I gotta sneak it out late, night, late at night in a rug like some mob boss. 
You know how hard it is when you get pulled over by the police not to look like a drug addict when you've got a Mr. Potato Head rolled up in a fucking rug? <laughs> you all right over there? A bit chatty? First time you're out? Younger generation, think it's okay to talk while people are on stage? Yeah, it's not. I'm gonna make you fucking cry. I know you're, you're attractive young girls and everybody here lets you get away with them, but I'm 46, so I'm not gonna fuck you, so I just fucking hate you, all right? <laughs> and the weird thing about it is you're young and attractive now, but looks fade and you're gonna dawn on you when you're 40 and you don't have a fucking personality that you should have fucking worked on it at one point in your life. So respect everyone else around you and shut the fuck up during the show, all right? But anyway, um, to all you newlyweds, have children. <laughs> no, I love them to death, I do. I'm just so tired. <laughs> My wife always talks about having another. And I don't want to tell her that I don't want to. I'm too tired. I haven't told her no, but every night at three in the morning, I sneak down to the kitchen and stand naked with a heart on beside the microwave for an hour. <laughs> By the way, if you're going to do that, make sure you know if your mother-in-law is staying over. Because like, no, that was <laughs> we don't talk about it. <laughs> I tried not to move. I just. <laughs> but yeah. But I love being married. I mean, the one thing I think marriage is. Marriage has failed because you got to marry your best friend. I mean, you can, you, the passion, you can't have it all the time. I don't have any, I used to have moves. You guys in your 20s, you have moves. I remember having moves. I'm 46 years old now. I don't have any moves. You know what a big move for me is? There? I stand there with a semi in front of my wife and go. No? All right, I'll try again tomorrow. <laughs> you gotta marry your best friend. My wife knows me and I know her. We know each other very well. I love her to death. She's an amazing woman. She doesn't know me that well, right? Well, I watch the Masters golf every year. It's not for everyone, but it's four days where I sit in front of the television and watch golf bet on a golfer, try to win. Well, she fucked up this year. She talked to me. <laughs> I'm watching the golf, right? And she, uh, she comes up and she goes, Sean, and I went, yeah. <laughs> she goes, you know that uh, wedding we're going to next week? And I went, yes, I hate weddings, what? She goes, well, I thought I'd put on weight since the last time I wore my dress. So uh, I've gone out and bought a new dress. Well, guess what? I've come home, tried on the old dress, and it fits too. What a dilemma, two dresses. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I looked at her, I said, you're right, honey. That is a dilemma, because I've searched my memory, and I can't remember giving a fuck about anything less in my entire life. <laughs> I can't believe you talked to me about that shit, you know? You know what I'm wearing to the wedding? My suit. You know which one? My only suit, all right? It's charcoal gray for weddings and funerals. And I can guarantee if any man in this room thought he put on weight since the last time he wore a suit, he would squeeze his fucking fat ass back into that suit. Rather than go shopping for another suit. I mean, why wouldn't you try on the dress before you went shopping? I didn't say that. <laughs> what I said was, I'm sure you're gonna look beautiful in whatever dress you wear, love. I'm such a cunt. <laughs> Getting married is such an important day for the woman. <laughs> it 
Just remember, guys, that we don't have to do anything. We just have to show up on the day, not be drunk or hungover. And usually most guys fuck that up as well, right? <laughs> But leading up to the wedding, I'll give you a hint, guys, if you're planning on getting married, just do what your woman says, do it quickly, don't question anything and you'll be fine. <laughs> Two weeks before the wedding, yeah, there's some women cheering back there, yeah. Two weeks before the wedding, I made a move with my wife. Oh, I say a move, you know what I did, but... Uh. <laughs> she pulled back, she said, look, we can't have sex, I'm too stressed out about the wedding. And I said, fine. Four days before the wedding, in a separate argument, I brought up the fact that we weren't fucking. Oh, I knew I did wrong right away. <laughs> if I was Superman, I would have flown the other, around the world the other way just to go back in time and give her a cookie. <laughs> her head turned and she looked at me and she said, Is that what you're worried about four days before the wedding? We're not fucking. I said, A little. <laughs> Sweet pea. She said, I'll tell you what I'll do. Why don't I go over to the computer here and I'll email all your asshole friends that have an RSVP to us back on whether they're coming to the dinner or not. While I'm doing that, you can just fuck me from behind. <laughs> you shouldn't say that to a man because I was like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> do you want me to get you a pillow for your elbows? Huh? Is it gonna be <laughs> she wasn't serious. I know that now. <coughs> Excuse me. That'll be edited out. Just in case you're wondering, uh, we're filming a new DVD here for uh, that's going to be released. So uh, I didn't want to tell you beforehand, just in case some people went, eh, you know, start that weird, and you exactly haven't been that happy. So I. <laughs> I figured I'd not, better not bring that up, but you're smiling a bit now, so thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Only on a DVD night would the angriest human being on the planet be there. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, you know what, every time, the last one I did, I did a big one in Canada, in, in, in Toronto, and it was weird weather, the entire front row didn't show up, so they panicked, because this was going on television, so they ran out and they just grabbed people on the street, right, and I started the show, and I'm doing it, and I look down in the front row, and nobody's laughing, right, and I couldn't figure out why, they grabbed 22 Spanish foreign exchange students <laughs> that didn't speak a word of fucking English. And they didn't even know why they were there. They were just sitting there going. <laughs> and you watch the DVD, it's hilarious. <laughs> I bring it up at one point. You guys don't even know why you're here. And, he go, and then it dawned on me, he didn't even understand that. <laughs> so anyway, welcome. <laughs> at least you speak English. <laughs> They had a reason not to like me. You just fucking hate me anyway. <laughs> we'll, we'll keep trying. I, uh, I had dated women all my life. I had, and I found more and more women that I dated as I got older had experiences with other women. But when you question them about it, they describe the situation like it happened accidentally, and that would confuse me as a man. I'd say to a woman, you ever been with another woman? It was always long-winded. Well, once. The men were fishing. It was foggy that day. I was with Jane. We're at the lake house drinking red wine, and she found a twister game above the shoes we hadn't played since we were kids, and she got an odd spin, red dot right hand. And as she reached over me, brushed against my breasts. Well, we giggled, then she fondled my breasts and went down on me, and it was beautiful, but we're not lesbians. I have yet to run into a bloke with that kind of story. I was watching the game with Dave. It was a little boring at halftime, so we thought we'd kick the ball around for a little while. He came down on a breakaway, tried to score. I went out to meet him. We got tangled up, and as he fell over me, cupped my balls. So... We giggled, and uh... 
the next thing you know, his cock was in my mouth. You know? I'm not saying we're gay, but we're going fishing next week. I don't know. <laughs> Nothing? Oh, not even a chuckle, for fuck's sakes. I'm trying to make you laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised more women don't punch their men in the face from time to time. <laughs> Why not? We're going to make a mistake eventually, and we'd much rather you hit us than talk. <laughs> See, women are better fighters than men because you use emotions we don't use. Men just get mad and punch each other, but women, you're like Jedis when you fight, you know? <laughs> My ex punched me in the face, my head turned, I could feel the blood trickling out of my nose, and this is when she got smarter than me. By the time I turned back, she was crying. <laughs> well, that's brilliant, isn't it? And I looked at her, I said, what the hell are you crying for? And this is when she got really smart. She went, I can't believe you made me so angry, I punched you in the face. <coughs> and you know what I said? Sorry. I get weird things happen to me when I've, when I've been doing gigs, you know. I angered some, uh, some bull dykes in Bristol. You know, and I don't care who you sleep with. And, I, and I'm sorry about the bull dyke phrase, but you guys know what I mean. Like, these weren't just lesbians. They were real. <laughs> so they were to the right. And every joke I did that was even oriented to sex, they all went, eh, typical male. And I finally snapped, and I looked at their leader, the one with the shortest hair. <laughs> And I said, is it true if you kill the head lesbian, the rest of you die? <laughs> By the way, it isn't. <laughs> I'd like to take this time out as a Canadian to apologize for Justin Bieber. <laughs> what a little dickhead he is, eh? I can honestly say that if Justin Bieber had been around, and the Believers at the time when Anne Frank was around as well, that Nazi Germany would have focused on an entirely different group other than the Jews. Such a little shithead. Remember, I'm coming out on BBC saying, I don't believe in abortion. I thought, fuck, I wish your parents had. I get weird things said to me after gigs. I had a woman come up to me uh, after the show. I was talking to someone and interrupted the conversation I was having and said, excuse me, you look like an ugly George Clooney. <laughs> Why the fuck would you tell me that? And I looked at her, I said, well, you're ugly, but you don't remind me of anyone. <laughs> I had another woman come up to me after the show and <laughs> say to me, excuse me, and I said, yeah. She says, You're Canadian, right? And I said, yes. She goes, how can you do that to the seals? <laughs> I said, what? She goes, how can, you do, how can you club them like that? They're such cute animals, it's so cruel. And I said, you're right. What we should do in Canada is get our friends together, get on horseback, chase them down, and allow our family pets to chew them to death. Would that be better? <laughs> Did that joke in London, and five minutes later, a drunk guy in the back of the room shut it out. They get in your fucking bins! <laughs> well, seals are annoying. You have no idea what it's like to come home and your big red ball and your hula hoop's missing. Sometimes they take your bicycle horn as well. <laughs> I, uh, I found out recently, I've been to Afghanistan eight times, and I, I found out performing for the British troops, and I found out that I'm getting a medal for it, which is, uh, the one thing I will say about that is support the troops. Even if you don't support the war, support the troops, because they don't have a choice. They have to be there because our government yeah. is fucked up. <laughs> And one of my favorite stories, and this is a true story about being down there, was uh, sitting 
in a forward operating base uh, with five British soldiers sitting in the dirt with a helicopter over top and machine gun and mortar fire off in the distance. And one of the soldiers said to me, where are you performing when you get back to the UK? And I said, well, the first show I'm doing is in Nottingham. And one of the other soldiers looked at me and went, it's fucking dangerous up there. <laughs> You keep your head down while you're in Nottingham, son. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, man. I don't like the press in this country. I'm going to leave you uh, on this thought. I, I can't stand the press in this country. I hate the government as well. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, even if you're well off, you, can't, you cannot be seriously thinking that this government is doing the right thing by capping benefits and taking the money away from the poor. There's no point in doing that in this country, all right? Even if you're well off. I mean, they're taking the money from the benefits cheats. That's what they focus on, the Tory, you know, oh, we must. But they don't touch the bankers, which stole more money from us. I mean, we apparently own 80% of RBS. Has anybody been to an RBS meeting recently? Have you been to a board meeting? Do you own anything? Do you... No, we don't own fuck all, right? The bankers are wankers, and that's why. I'm sorry. But they always do this, especially the papers, which they control, the governments, right? They always do the same thing. They have that same picture of a bald guy with tattoos from head to toe, standing there with a pit bull on a chain. And the headline always reads the same thing. It says, uh, this guy's on benefits. We pay to keep him at home. Well, let me ask you something. Do you want this cunt at work with you? <laughs> Matt, I want to thank you guys because you were an incredible audience. So I hope you enjoyed that. I'm Sean Collins. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.